with Athletic Director Mark Coyle, Mike Grimm, and we're in Indianapolis waiting to uh, go home to the University of Minnesota. And what a last, I'm sure, 36 to 48 hours this has been for you, Mark, with everything that's happened here at the Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament and then nationally. Um, what's the last 36 to 48 hours been like for the Athletic Director at the University of Minnesota? I uh, think experiencing the same emotions uh, all of us are feeling right now, right? I mean, I think we're in uncharted territory, and you're doing your best to gather as much information as you can from the experts uh, and a lot of conversations with President Gable, who's been unbelievable leading us through this process, a lot of conversations with uh, Commissioner Warren and the Big Ten Conference, and just really thankful for their leadership to help us through this new territory for all of us. Uh, you mentioned President Gable and Commissioner Warren. Um, obviously, the communication with them. Who then do they? Who are they getting their advice from? I'm sure there's experts that are trying to help with all of this, as you mentioned, with uncharted territory. Yeah. Well, the great thing about the Big Ten Conference, you know, all great research institutions with phenomenal medical uh, experience, and, and obviously we have experts that that they consult with. And, and again, Mike, I can't talk to you enough about the leadership of President Gable, uh, Commissioner Warren. Uh, these are not in any handbooks, right? And, and you're making decisions. And I can tell you all these decisions are being made with the safety of our student athletes, our coaches, our fans, and everybody that interacts with our program in the Big Ten Conference. So again, just really grateful for their leadership, but it's been lots of conversations, uh, multiple phone calls, multiple text messages, and you know, it's happening real time. I mean, I can tell you during our game last night, uh, there's a lot of text messages, a lot of phone conversations. I had a chance to be with you on the radio at halftime, and I'm checking text messages, getting breaking news as it's happening. So again, just a lot of, uh, deep conversations, a lot of information going back and forth, and ultimately I feel like we made the right decision. And then logistically you have teams, a softball team is in Hawaii, I think tennis is in Kentucky, basketball here, uh, baseball almost got out of town to go to Colorado to play Air Force, you were able to uh, make sure they didn't leave. I mean, how has that been from Indy to try to maneuver that and then communicate with the coaches uh, with, I'm sure for them, some very disappointing news in the in the athletic side of things? Well, well Mike, you've heard me talk about this before. We, we have wonderful coaches and wonderful staff who care a great, great deal about our student athletes and, and you are having some hard conversations. And, you know, early this morning, uh, we started to talk to our coaches who were on the road. Uh, our primary concern was we wanted to get them back to the Twin Cities, so we've been able to do that logistically with our staff back uh, back in the Twin Cities. Uh, and then we wanted to make sure if we had any teams going out, we wanted to make sure we put a hold on that so those teams did not leave campus because, again, this was so fluid. And then when the Big Ten, when we started to have conversations with uh, with our peers across the Big Ten uh, and other groups, we realized that you know it looked like the Big Ten was going to suspend play uh, for the semester. So we felt like we made the right decision. And then it was a lot of conference calls, uh, not only with our senior staff, but we got on the phone, I think, two or three times a day with our head coaches and explained the situation to them. And I'm so grateful for how, how they've responded. Um, obviously, um, disappointment's not the right word. Uh, I, I don't know what the right word is because, uh, you know, we are around extremely competitive people, right? And they want to compete at the highest level. In a matter of hours, you're being told your season's done. And, and they're taking that information. But again, I'm very proud of how our coaches absorb that information, how our staff absorb that information. And then we've been communicating to our student athletes and we need to make sure we provide the resources they need because there's a lot of these kids that have a lot of questions right now. What does this mean? What's gonna happen next? And we don't have those answers. Uh, so it's our job to make sure we continue to communicate with all of them and work our way through this. Um, everything good travel-wise though, you're confident that everyone will be back here in the next 24 hours, on, can't, not here in Indianapolis obviously, but in the Twin Cities. Yeah, from, from what I've been told by our staff, we like we'll get everybody back on campus, uh, which is important to us, and, uh, and get to make sure we can see them and, and keep in contact with them. Yeah, you mentioned disappointment. Maybe is not the right word when you talk about um, athletes and coaches who are competing at Minnesota at a high level. I mean, for example, the women's hockey team is three wins away from bringing home a national championship trophy, and you have to break that news. And softball's coming off of their World Series year, and you end it there. What is that balance that you have to explain between you want to compete for a title, but there's a public, a worldwide public health risk here? Well, Mike, again, I think it goes back to your people, and we have great, great people, and I think they all understand this is much bigger than sports. Um, you know, what we do, we take very seriously. Again, we're very competitive. We want to compete at a high level, but I think everybody understands this is much bigger than sports. And again, uh, I have a great deal of respect and admiration for our coaches and our staff because they understand our central core of who we are as our student athletes and making sure we provide them with a safe and positive experience. And that's our goal, and that's why we made the decision we did today.
Next week, wrestling uh, was to have happened at the Viking Stadium with 30, maybe 40,000 people there. Obviously, that has been canceled now. A lot of work went into that. I'm sure there was some disappointment from fans, go for, athlete, uh, go for athletes who were, were hoping to win national titles, too. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, and the NCAA obviously came out this afternoon and said they've canceled all their championships, winter and spring championships through the academic year. So, again, uh, it's just uncharted territory for all of us. And I think the big thing is I look forward to getting back to campus. Uh, we'll fly home late tonight, be back in campus tomorrow on, on with our student athletes and our coaches to try to answer their questions. I think it's important that we have face-to-face -face conversations with each other right now because, again, a lot of us are trying to wrestle with this. We're trying to understand what happened. I mean, if you think about it, you know, we landed here Tuesday afternoon. Here it is Thursday night. Think about what's happened since when we took off from the Twin Cities to now. Uh, think about 24 hours ago when I was with you on the radio network at halftime to where we are right now. I mean, it's changing so much. And, and again, we're just trying to stay on top and make sure we continue to communicate with everybody. But it It'll be good to be back home tomorrow to see people and interact with them and give them, you know, any information we have that's new. And as you mentioned, it's a fluid situation. What if we did this interview tomorrow for an update? There's probably all kinds of new info. Um, academics, obviously, uh, there will be no face-to-face -face, uh, uh, instruction on the U of M campus. Um, these athletes, uh, you know, are trying to get to some of them trying to get to their degree at the end of this semester. Some will want to finish the semester. Some are not even from the United States that are competing in tennis. Or uh, Marcus Carr is from Toronto, Canada. You know, uh, we've got a young man from Turkey on the basketball team. So um, I would guess the next few days and into the weekend, all of those things are, are uh, on the table in terms of trying to figure out um, how online study will go for some, uh, some, some of those athletes. Yeah, again, we're thankful for President Gable's leadership. You know, she sent out communication to campus earlier in the week about we're extending spring break to next Wednesday, uh, encouraging students not to come back to campus right now. Uh, I believe, if I understand it correctly, we'll have online classes until April 1st, and they'll reassess that situation at that time. You know, I have one department to worry about. She's got an entire system to worry about. So again, I give her a lot of credit for her leadership. And I can tell you we've had conversations with uh, JT Brute and our Lindell Academic Center and how we'll provide that academic support uh, for our student athletes during this transitional period with the online classes. And, and I'm sure uh, President Gable will continue to update us and provide us with more information as we go through this transition over the next few weeks. As they say, and I think Commissioner Warren said it today, better safe than sorry. And that's where we're at. Yeah, no doubt. Again, you know, I'm so appreciative that people do understand um, you've got to make the best decision for the student athletes, their safety, the safety of our media that cover us, the safety of the fans that come to our events, our coaches and staff. So uh, there's no doubt it's the right decision. And we'll all move forward from this and learn lessons, continue to get better in the future as we move forward. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks so much.